I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Thursday, October the 17th. Brought to you in part by the International Brangus Breeders Association. Brangus, nothing fake here, just real ranchers producing top quality beef. To find a breeder or a sale near you, visit gobrangus.com. Calves are moving, and I tell you what, just all of a sudden, I know we've been talking about the calf run and uh and expecting it and you know we've started to trickle in a little bit more but all of a sudden this week bang calves are moving all over the midwest all over the northern plains and uh and lots of them and it's enough uh, that it's it's keeping the the market on them under wraps so you kind of got a, a a standoff or actually your your market is holding in there fairly steady as you've got uh, more demand for your one iron long string calves with a reputation uh, then you've got uh, you've got discounts being applied on the ball and calves some of them are the reputation calves those those big ranches uh, that, that have long strings of calves uh, they're reluctant to, to uh, wean those calves and they haven't had to yet uh, if you're a small producer you're forced to or, or you're not going to be able to keep doing this but uh, you know even on the big videos and things most all those big long strings of calves they sell, they wean those right before they load them or they take them off the cow right then. But, uh, you know, if, if one of those uh, outfits that has the long strings, the top quality, high genetic cattle, if they decide to go ahead and wean them, then you've really got something there. But uh, most of them don't want to give that up or, or it's going to crowd them out on the grass they're going to need for their cows uh, this winter or whatever, whatever have you. But uh, it, the calves are moving, and, uh, and so you've got buyers out there for these calves, and they're expecting them, been waiting on them, but they can get pretty particular as, the, as they know that there's just the next day there's going to be another sale with five or 6,000 calves, and then the day after that there's going to be another sale with five or 6,000 calves, and now you get to the point where trucks are the biggest thing. You've got to be able to get those calves to move and got to get them on the road. And some of your bigger buyers that keep those trucks busy year round or, or all through the seasons, uh, they'll be able to get trucks. And, and some of the independents that come in there, they won't. And the worst thing you can do, especially to some balling calves, is let them loiter or hang around a sale barn for two or three days uh, after you've bought them. You need to get those cattle going where they need to go. Uh, you need to get their shots in them, you need to get them comfortable, and you need to start watching them because they're going to start breaking on you pretty soon. But uh, that's kind of where we're at on the calves. I'm going to give you guys a lot of feeder cattle quotes uh, this visit, so, so look forward to that. Uh, you know, the, the reason that we were talking about this big calf run, and you see the big disparage in prices. I mentioned it last week, uh, I believe it was West Plains, Missouri at Ozarks Regional Stockyard. You saw your weaned heavy five and six weight steer calves with a 20 or 25 dollar advantage to your balling uh, calves of the same weight and probably the same quality it's just that big a deal and uh and you know we've been talking about how we need more competition uh in our markets and and we wanted a, a government investigation of the big four packers and we want this and we want that and we want laws changed and some people want uh, more labeling and this and that and everything that goes on we got to look ourselves in the mirrors guys and think what's some things that we can do to help our situation out I've said it many times on here over the years if you guys have been watching me if you have the opportunity to fall calf you need to do it and uh, and you get a lot of guys really resisting that and I've even got uh, hate mail because of that oh you know how could I do that I'm not doing that it doesn't work for me okay if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work for you but like I said if you have the opportunity if you can do it I realize some of you guys graze at elevation uh, certain times of the year and you got to take your cows away it's not going to work for you okay it doesn't work for you but for you guys that it does work for uh, you know give it a try our problem with our with our cattle industry is is showing its face right now with all these big slugs of big fat 575 to 700 pound calves there's too many of them to choke 
and and we've we've uh, we've helped, got our genetics so good that we're weaning bigger calves all the time now, and some people aren't weaning them, but we've got bigger calves that get bigger uh, at, at sale time, and then what do you do with them? So you've got a calf there. Let's say you've got a big fat steer calf weighing in the sixes. Okay, what's somebody supposed to do with that calf? They're supposed to take him to a back grounding yard and let him ball and shrink uh, for two or three weeks and then hope he doesn't get sick and then he's going to weigh uh, significantly less than he did when he went through the ring and then they're going to turn him out on wheat. Uh, okay, and then, then he's going to have to spend a lot of the time, a lot of the fallout on wheat to try to catch up on what he lost and then you're just hoping the weather doesn't get you uh, as you get uh, into the new year and, and whenever it starts to warm up before you have to come off the wheat, you have just a few weeks or a few days really there to really cash in on that wheat and you hope the weather doesn't get you. Okay, well that's one scenario you can take. Maybe you can uh, dry winter that calf and you're going to give up significant weight and significant weight gain to try to have a, a yearling uh, in the spring. Well, that's great, but you know, it doesn't really seem, it hasn't made sense to me to put the brakes on an animal uh, just to kind of let them languish at a weight or just kind of hold themselves together. Sometimes it is an advantage to get to a, to a market to a time of the year where you're going to have a market, but, but uh, what else can you do with that big fat calf? Well, you can uh, take him right to the feedlot, and that's what a lot of guys end up doing is taking those big calves right to the feedlot. Well, they're going to walk the fences and ball there and back up some for quite a while there, but uh, you have the best chance there of getting them on feed, getting their rumens working good again, and getting them rolling again. And then you, you pretty soon, within just a few days, if not a few weeks, uh, you're going to have them up on a finishing ration, and then you're going to start pouring the concentrated feed to them. Well, then they're going to start getting fat earlier, and then you're going to have a, a fat uh, steer or heifer there that, that's going to quit you at about 13 when you really want to take it to 14.75 or 15 and a half or something like that. Uh, there's a limit to what they're going to gain and, and they kind of hit a wall right there. So you're not getting all the good out of buying that animal and you're a whole lot better, buying off, better off buying a yearling. So we're in the time of the year uh, where, where people really want lightweight calves uh, that, that are thin fleshed and they can they can take them and background them there for a couple three weeks and actually add weight to them and and add some value to them there and putting the shots in them and then turning them out and and uh, and they really go to town on that wheat or whatever fall grazing you decide to give them or if you've got a yearling you know you can pretty much do what you want to but we've got to start leveling out our supplies a little bit about 65 percent of our calves in this country are born in the first half of the year. Uh, you know, the 65 doesn't sound so much, but when you talk about the flip side, when you really want those calves, only 35% of your calves are there. So that's why I say we need to fall calf more. You don't have to calve those cows, or especially when you, if you're trying to calve heifers out, you don't have to do it in a snowbank in, in February, March, and April. You can do it on green grass, right there in September and, and get along just as good. You can't tell quite as many Wild West stories to your friends and take pictures on social media about how miserable it is and all that and, and dropping calves in floodwaters and they float down the river or uh, in a snow bank and you gotta try to dig them out with a skid load or something like that. No, you can have them right there on the green grass. And then you think, well, I, I don't wanna have to take uh, you know, take them through the winter, it's going to cost me more to feed them that way. Well, you know, what's if you got a, a lactating cow uh, or, or a bread cow, you know, what's the difference there? And, and I think the trade-off is a lot easier for those of you that have the ability to do it. I think you need to do it. If we smoothed out our, our supplies a little bit, I think we'd be a whole lot better off, or I know we would be, and, and if you don't want better demand for your calf at every stage of its life, don't fall calf. But if you want to fall calf and then you want to have a lightweight calf in the spring that everybody wants, or you want to keep him yourself and turn him out, and then have a yearling in the summertime when everybody wants one, that's your fall calf deal. Uh, if you're going to continue to spring calf like everybody does, 
uh, then then you're going to have a you know you're going to have a miserable time calving because of the weather, and then you're going to have a, a big fat calf. Uh, of course, he's had it pretty nice through the summer there on Mama and the green grass too. But then you got a big fat calf in the fall of the year right now when everybody else has one. And then if you decide to keep him in and take him to a heavier weight, then you've got a big fat steer uh, or a big fat heifer that's finished right in the bad time of the year and in, in the meat of the summer when the market's always depressed. But the more of us that would move over to the fall and smooth that out, it would just be better for everybody. And your, your markets wouldn't be nearly as volatile. You wouldn't stand so much risk and, and all that. But uh, it, it's a pretty good deal if you guys can do it. And, and when you go to the sale and you see all these other ball, big ball and calves and you can only choke so many of them and you can only haul so many of them off, then, then you, know, you need to think about doing some of that. Let's look at the board uh, for Wednesday. October live cattle futures up $1.35. I can't tell you how impressive this, this live cattle contract is. And we have a little bit of a, a pullback like we did uh, earlier this week. And they think, oh, here comes the correction. And it just comes right back again and comes right back again. And not jumping two or three dollars up and then a dollar and a half back. No, making nice good gains uh, sometime getting up there in the triple digits but pretty much every day just been up there enough to make a difference but not too much but uh, December live cattle up 42 cents 113.87 uh, your only big gains were, were on the spot uh, uh, contract there as you went out it, it kind of faded but they were still uh, fairly positive and you look at that uh, your spot contract on October at 112.35 and you think, well, uh, we're not quite getting that for cattle yet, and there's no basis there. You, you realize how this, this last rally we've had here in the last month, six weeks, uh, has been so nice because we haven't had any basis jumpers. And we haven't any, had anybody pulling the rug out from under the market as you get to it. Guys are, guys are going out, and they're grabbing, and they're digging in, and they're trying to get more for the cattle every week. And they're not paying that much attention to the board uh, because it's not really working in their favor. And so we're actually seeing higher prices early in the week. And then, and then they keep getting gradually higher all the way till Saturday, like we've seen the last couple of weeks. But it sure made it nice. October feeder cattle up 22 cents at 145.22. November down 15 cents at 145.92. Your fat cattle trade, we still have not established anything. There hasn't been hardly any negotiated sales to speak of. We had a few more in Iowa on Wednesday at a buck eleven and a buck seventy-one confirmed. Uh, we didn't have anything confirmed in Nebraska, but did hear, hear some rumors of, uh, of some regional packers paying one seventy-eight and and some guys not liking the, the dress that they get at that, that particular pack. So it really is more like a 175 market, which would still be higher. And, uh, and so we're looking good as far as that goes. I've heard of some uh, trickle trade around the fringes of the outside of the five area feeding region that, uh, that are dollars higher again. And uh, guys are wanting cattle and they tend to feed some of those better cattle out around the outside of the five areas. And also, the Packers can come in there and buy cattle higher, and it doesn't influence the weighted average for your five area feeding region, so it doesn't hurt them there, so they'll do that. Southern Plains haven't traded a hoof. Take note, your Fed Cattle Exchange, which I've talked about here on many times, is a timed auction uh, online that uh, has, has not had a whole lot of success, but it's, uh, it's an avenue to get competition in this fat cattle trade. Especially for you guys that don't sell every week, uh, it's, it's a good way to, to, to get guys to, to bid on the cattle and try to get the most for, them, for what they're worth. But uh, the normal sale is on Wednesday morning. This Friday, they're having a sale at 10 o'clock in the morning, this Friday, and all consignment fees will be waived for this particular sale on Friday. So what I'm saying is if you guys got some fat cattle that are ready, uh, and I mean ready right now if uh, if they're in loose hands or you haven't promised them to anybody or you haven't put them on a on a schedule on a formula schedule or you don't have them on a grid or a negotiated grid or or contracted or anything like that if they're in loose hands they're your cattle you can do with them what you want just try it. consign them to that fed cattle exchange what do you got to lose 
That's the problem with the Fed cattle exchanges. They never uh, consistently able to get enough cattle consigned to that sale to get any leverage to, to make it significant. And uh, if we would start supporting that and more people would consign their fat cattle to that auction, then it would work for everybody. But that would take cattlemen getting together and pushing in the same direction. And we all know if we look at our associations and what's kind of been going on here, we like to bicker and fight and, and yell in different uh, directions and, and pull different ways. And uh, it's just because of, as uh, by nature, your cattlemen are hard headed, stubborn, and, uh, and very individualistic. So that's just, uh, it's, that's just the way it is, guys. But let's talk about uh, what else is going on. Box beef cutout values kind of mixed on Wednesday, but have been higher so far this week. Choice cuts 218.28 up 26 cents. Selects 191.37 down 11, but not a lot of going on. Your slaughter's about right. Uh, talk about some uh, feeder cattle things. St. On South Dakota. I talked to Justin Tupper on uh, Wednesday, and, and he's a friend of mine, and, and he's going to have big Friday calf sales the next three Fridays. So uh, if you guys are inter interested in that, that's out in, uh, in western uh, South Dakota. But St. Ange uh, has got big calf specials coming up, and I tell you what, they won't get any better than those calves right there at St. Ange. They've got some really, really nice strings of calves coming up here in the next few weeks. Uh, you know, I always talk about the big prices, your, your high dollar fancy things and everything, and, and more people say, well, why don't you talk to us more about what we can buy some cheaper calves for, and then turn them into yearlings or, and put loads together to try to get some of those big prices, and, and that's where your money's made. And, uh, and I often talk about Ellison Carter down there in, in Texas, and, and he's a shipper that can send you calves uh, if you want to put them on wheat or, or graze them or, or even just shut them in a grow, lot, grow yard or a background and lot. But uh, another friend of mine, Wes Spinks, and he's in uh, Jericho Springs, Missouri, but he works that southern Missouri and western Missouri markets up through there. And he can put you some calves together. He sent me a picture here. I was asking him kind of what they're costing. He bought a load of, of these calves here. Looks like quality's good enough. 465 pound, mostly bulls, but steers mixed in there and unweaned. Um, they're ballers. And uh, for 144 FOB, that would be leaving that country down there in southwest Missouri. Uh, he had some similar weaned 565 pound steers at 151. But uh, if you're going to buy, and I know everybody wants to, to get in and buy those things cheap and sell them high, that's the name of the game. But if you're going to buy those put together cattle like that, uh, you kind of got to know what you're doing. Uh, he, uh, Wes has a background in yard right there, and he can do a lot of that for you if you'd like for him to. But uh, if you guys are buying some of these put together calves like I talk about here with Wes's cattle or Ellison's, you got to keep in mind that uh, those cattle are coming from different homes. Uh, they're getting a totally new environment. They're getting exposed to de diseases and things that they've never been exposed to before. And it's a lot of stress on those cattle. It's shipping fever. And, and you need to, to know what you're doing. You can't just buy those cattle and turn them out. Now, most people are saying, yeah, no shit. But some people don't know. And it's a, it's a thing that you need. A lot of those cattle are going to need 30 days in a lot with a lot of care. And a lot of watching and somebody that knows how to pull a sick one and somebody that knows how to doctor one and knows uh, the right nutrition that they need to try to help keep them from getting sick and knows the tricks that it takes to keep the uh, stress down on them I mean gosh I've been in those wrecks before and I know a lot of you guys have been before where you just you know you just you think nothing's working uh, you just wonder if you're ever going to get them straightened out. Uh, if you guys have ever been in the deals like I have where you, you've got your sick pen, which is usually a smaller lot, and then you got your out pen that you walk through them in, and, and you get to the day where you look around and, and there's more in the sick pen than they are on the out pen, and you have to switch the two to give them more room. Now, if you guys have been there, you, you've been through it tough, but I tell you what, you, turn, you find out who the real cowboys are when you get a bunch of these uh, put together calves uh, together and you can try to get them straightened out. But once you get that done, you've added a lot of value to them. And then you've got to, and, and when you get to be yearlings, guys uh, don't care. Your feedlots don't care if they're put together cattle, if they've been together for six, eight months. 
uh, you know, it's just like a home range deal as far as they're concerned for the most part. Let's talk about some more markets that's going around. Uh, your real-time index on Cattle Market Central late in the day on Wednesday set at 143.58. That was actually down 44 cents. And just because so many calves starting to sneak into that 7 to 899 range that makes up our index. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, OKC West, El Reno, Oklahoma, over 10,000 head for the two-day sale there. Feeders, steers, two to four dollars higher. Uh, weaned calves were fully steady, but the not weaned calves were sure lower, but hard to call. It's just different stages of, of of not being weaned and and not having shots and things like that. You're gonna have you're gonna take a discount, guys. So there's, there's no really need to watch the market if you're not going to uh, add the value to those calves to make them at least par, which would be a weaned calf with shots. And so it's hard to tell how much off they are. And, and you can't get a commission agent to tell you because he doesn't know either how severe the discount's going to be. But uh, you want to know what the market is on calves? El Reno, Oklahoma, 168 head, 588 pound steer calves in El Reno bring 156.75. Now let's talk about some yearlings. Uh, Platt Livestock, Platt, South Dakota. Uh, George and Brett Kinsey. And I met Brett, Brett Kinsey uh, recently. Uh, he and I uh, will, will be friends from now on probably, but uh, I don't know him that well. But hear a lot of good things about him. And he's got a, not, he's got a very good uh, uh, judge of, of the atmosphere here in this cattle production arena. And he's kind of fighting for the cow cow calf man he's fighting for your background or he's fighting for your rancher uh he's doing a lot of good things out there well they sold some of their cattle uh at platt livestock there in platt south dakota sold four loads of heavy nine weight steers uh they the average on the four loads the average of the loads will be 984 pounds with an average price of 147.44 uh, with with the top end being some 969 pounders at 148.75, that's a heck of a price right there. That's some Platt livestock, Platt, South Dakota. Let's talk about a market that uh, doesn't have as fancy an address. How about Texoma, Oklahoma? I told you guys on the last visit they were having their big barbecue special there, and that's one of the best restaurants in the in no man's land in the Oklahoma Panhandle. If you guys uh, are ever through Texoma, stop there and eat because it's a good place to eat and I'm sure the meal they provided was fantastic. But uh, I told you about that long string of Freeman steers, the big steers. They, they uh, 482 head of them weighed 840 pounds at 146 and my friend Clay Myers there that owns and runs that sale barn, he, he uh, admitted that selling those calves, especially those ballers, he said it was tough sledding, guys. It's just it's not a lot of homes for them because there's just literally so many of them everywhere. And, uh, and it's, it's hard to get anybody really interested in them unless they're 60 days weaned and got shots in them and, and quality to boot. But let's talk about uh, your market that uh, normally tops it when they have a sale. But even Bassett, Nebraska, now I wouldn't say anything bad about you, Shane, or any there, and I'm not saying it now. I'm just saying there's so many calves moving that uh, my eyeballs stayed in my head for the most part when I was looking through your sales on Cattle Market Central. Uh, now, you did, you did surprise me on these big steers here, but uh, on your calves... Uh, they they were about the same as all the other sales up there in the northern plains because there's just so many of them guys even in Bassett, Nebraska but 4,900 head there and they had a great sale but the stick out deal was naturally yearling cattle because the the calf deals flooded but 177 head of 973 pound yearling steers bring 153.30 that's your feeder flash for Thursday